Hey guys, got another um, bit of unusual tech to take apart. Um, this thing that um, um, is simply called a microprocessor indicator, uh, a rather generic name. Um, I picked this up off eBay a few weeks ago. Um, cost me 1p, um, although the seller didn't even want, want, want the 1p. There you go. Um, it, uh, it was listed apparently as a dissolved oxygen meter um, from a brewery. Uh, but it comes with, um, there's no sensors or anything with it, it's literally just the box. Um, I can't even power it up because it's got... Um, um, I'm assuming that this is the, the power input, um, but obviously it's some weird weird connector thing. So, But we'll see if we can get this uh, this powered up when we take it apart. So it's, it's a big old lump of aluminium, uh, weighs about three kilos. Um, it's obviously pretty well made, um, probably expensive. Um, there's not a huge amount uh, to, see, to see on it. There's a, some kind of, oh, it's just a, a pat test. Um, tested 09, <laughs> it's been a while since that's been there. Um, Nothing on here, nothing underneath. So it's literally just uh, the buttons on the front and the uh, these bits on the back, which are um, titled uh, solenoid, pressure, sensor zero, sensor one, recorder, that's obviously not there. Um, old style um, Centronics printer interface and RS-232. So I guess uh, uh, this is gonna be talking maybe 2000 or before, I uh, guess. So, um, so on the front here you got, uh, this is presumably the power switch, I don't have a key for it, so um, I can't do anything with that. So you got off, locked and on. Um, and these um, really odd buttons, that I've uh, not seen anything like that before. They, um, they're actually made out of rubber and have um, a small metal insert So it's a bit weird. Obviously meant for um, somewhere where it's, it's wet or... Was there an IP rating on the back? No. So, let's, uh, let's take this apart and uh, see what there is inside. Okay, so... Uh, um, obviously there's nothing on the front here that's going to obviously come off. Um, the bale is just a, it's just attached on these two pivots. So it looks like we're going in through the back and it's um, Allen keys. Well, that's stuck on there pretty well. Uh, I'm missing something. No, it is. It is moving. It looks like there's a big rubber gasket going around here. There we are. We're in. Let's see what there is. That weird connector there does look like it's the power supply because you've got an earth strap here as well and this connector we've got this one which was solenoid this runs up to a pin header we've got pressure sensor zero and sensor one on 
ribbon cable running underneath underneath this board the same goes for that one that's the printer and that's RS232 so it all runs down onto presumably another board underneath so I would suspect at first glance that this will be a power supply board ah, we, looks like we have a date code here as well Nine seven three two. So, week thirty two, nineteen ninety seven. I would uh, take a stab at. Looks like we have to remove these um, these big standoffs. We got mains in presume this is a mains filter and it goes through it's interesting. Looks like they made uh, made some changes on that because it looks like the rem there's remains of a track just there. But uh, yeah, anyway, the uh, output there DFO four bridge rectifier. I'm presuming that just. Drops into a load of uh, linear regs. So seven, eight, twelve. Can't quite read the other ones. Without taking the heat sinks off. Seven, nine, fifteen. That one's so that's uh, minus fifteen. Right. So in here. We now have a, an aluminium plate. Okay, let's see how far the rabbit hole goes. Okay, looks like we found the brains of it. Good. Intel 80C32 dated 14th week 1995 we've got we've got a push switch there it's interesting and we've got some bodges there as well goes through the mains filter and then down to the switch. Obviously these two these two lines will be the the locked position. The uh, the on off will switch the mains and then you've got a low voltage there for a keypad lock or something. We've got um, a net problem there, AMO ninety, eleventh of the second nineteen eighty eight going back even further and 2640 that, that was the model number of the uh, first of the fifth 91 
So this is obviously going back quite a way. So um, <laughs> looking at this big, big, big mess of wires, it um, uh, looks like we've got uh, a power supply board. We've got um, probably the um, analog front end board. I would say this is pro this looks multi-purpose to me, um, given that there's you got one, two. These are unpopulated, so this could be up to four channels of something. Um, so they probably just reconfigure this depending on uh, what sort of measurements they're going to be making. Right, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pull out these two EPROMs. We'll have a look what's in there. Um, and then I'll reassemble it and I'll actually try powering on now I know um, how the mains is arranged and we'll uh, we'll see what happens on the on the display okay before I uh, um, go to put this back together so I can try powering it up I'm just gonna have a quick run through some of the um, the ICs on the on this analog board here um, also I've just noticed that there's a uh, Obviously, we've got the uh, LCD screen on the front of this, so I suspect that will this connector here just disappears down down between. So I suspect that's just the the LCD module. Now here we've got an um, analog device, is AD seven five eight two KN. Um, quad um, quad analog switches. Single pole, single throw. Presumably, we've got um, multiple sense lines coming in, and these just switch, allow the device to switch between them. Got the air prom out here. So, there's NM27C256Q. So, on here. And then two seven C two five six Q. Dip twenty eight. <laughs> is an um, C27 C256 BQ so an um, C27 C256 B, but we don't have a BQ. I'll give the B a try. Okay, so I'm going to uh, reassemble this and uh, then we'll turn it on and see see if we get anything on the screen
So I'm just going to power this up. I'm going to use um, one of my little toys. Um, I probably don't really need to do this. I'll probably just plug it into the mains and turn it on. But if you've got toys, you might as well use them, eh? Um, so I've got this running in through into a, a quick test quick test thing here. So I can just uh, connect that up to the wires and we'll turn it on. Okay, I saw the display just starting to come on there, so um, it's not drawing any, hardly any power at all. So, so what I'm doing here is just um, adjusting the voltage on here. As you can see, I've got a voltmeter here. So I'm just going to turn this up to uh, about 240 volts. Okay, there you go. Um, not a huge amount to see on this one, I'm afraid. Um, the um, obviously the construction of this, the physical construction, is it's built like a, it's built like a tank. Uh, but I think the the insides um, are a bit a bit of a letdown, really, with the um, few bodge wires, and you've got all these little wires coming out everywhere. It's um, not exactly neat and tidy. Um, so I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you've got any um, ideas on what this might have been uh, specifically used for or um, how it works, etc., I'd be interested to know. Leave those in the comments. That'd be that'd be cool. Um, I'll be um, uh, I'll likely put up the um, dumps of the EPROM um, onto the internet somewhere. So if if you're interested, you can download that and have a look through some of the code. Um, so if you, if you like this video, hit the like button. Uh, it's much appreciated. And um, I'll see you on the next video.